family. I have, I'm with Ethan here and we're just talking a little bit about some things with the kids that we have been wanting to share with you. Um, an experience with somebody that we wanted to share with you. And so I just figured what better way to do this than for he and I just to talk about it and share it with you. So, um, Cameron? Yeah. Cameron is one of Ethan's friends and Ethan is really really cool because anytime he has a friend come here he always wants to make sure the kids um, minister over his friends so we always look forward to that whenever that happens because um, it's just so fun to so meet nice. new so, people yeah. so tell us about Cameron yeah so I mean every I know what it did for me personally mm -hmm. Like whenever you guys ministered over me so mm -hmm. I was like man everybody needs to experience this so I met Cam uh, freshman year of college we actually roomed together in football camp and at that time my lifestyle really wasn't that good but I did find out that Cam loved the Lord you know he was a Christian and uh, same struggle that I was going through you know as a 19 20 year old kid trying to you know fit in and, and go to the party scene and everything like that but yet still trying to walk Mm -hmm. you know with the Lord as well so we both were you know related to that and getting to know Cameron a little bit more you know um, as we kind of separated ways we never finished at Shippensburg University um, you know he because he um, had a charge that he had to kind of uh, take care of that's why he couldn't finish um, and so pretty much I mean the culture that Cameron was raised in from a young age, it's just this lifestyle that you have to put up a front in, you know, all the pretty much every area of a life in order to survive, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know, he sell, he sold drugs, got in trouble for that. Pretty much maxed his time out as an adolescent, like a young adolescent, in the system, um, and just you know always had this constant battle with you know wanting to serve the Lord, but mm -hmm. also being pulled to that lifestyle. Um, so we, we kept in contact for all those years. He actually ended up going back to Millersville University, graduating, getting his degree. Um, and one, one, one weekend he was like, man, I, I need to come see you. So he did and, and we hung out that weekend. And then uh, I was like, man, I was like, I got a surprise for you. <laughs> I was like, you need to, I was like, he's like, what is it, what is it? I was like, don't worry. And so then we, we took him back to Jocelyn and the kids and yeah. And the that morning was just incredible. So the kids knew they didn't know anything about Cameron. They just knew that it was Ethan or as the kids like to call Ethan Thor. It was his friend and so they were really excited to minister over him. And <clears throat> you know, we opened up just with the kids, you know, asking the Lord, like, what do you see when you look at Cameron? What do you think about what happens inside of your heart whenever you see Cameron? And they had some pretty incredible words, didn't yeah, they? I mean, like, like really cool stuff. Stuff even like one time it was like the kids said they saw Cameron go into this like <clears throat> field that mm -hmm. was like dead and there was nothing growing there. And when Cameron came, there were all the workers had gone home remember and he rallied all the people to come work the field again yeah and then the rains came and it was just such a cool like there were just so many cool yeah. pictures I'm just I mean I know that that's I'm just getting emotional thinking about it because I've I've been to his hometown I've been where he's raised and it's just mm -hmm. it's there's he is that though Cameron mm. is so so much light he brings he is so different you know mm -hmm. like he, he yeah he just paddles to, you know, he, he, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but. Yeah. Well, so there were all these, like, incredible things that the father sees in Cameron that the kid's so connected with. And then we, you know, we got together and <laughs> they're playing. We got together and we decided that we'd all sit on the floor um, surrounding Cameron. Mm -hmm. And I just really felt like, yeah, that was <clears throat> I just remember feeling like, so Cameron sees all this and he hears all this and I felt like his heart was connecting to it. Mm -hmm. But 
Didn't think he believed it. I didn't, I didn't feel like he believed it. You know, and so we decided to just ask Cameron, would you be vulnerable enough with these kids to tell them what you see when you look at yourself? And if it's not the Lord, let them wipe it off so that you're free of it and you don't ever have to see that way again. And it, he was a little uh, guarded at first, wasn't yeah, he? For sure. <laughs> a little guarded at first. And then we were just like, there's no better place to be vulnerable because kids don't have a judgmental bone in their body. So this is a great place, you know? And, and then he started to open up. And I mean, it went deep, didn't it? Yeah. Just unworthiness and yeah, ugly, and pure, yeah. rejected, yeah. like just things that were so, and just, you know, he even had to take time to say each word. Like it was hard. And I remember these kids knew, they knew exactly what they were doing, mm -hmm. didn't they? Mm -hmm. Like they so knew what they were doing with the Lord. And they were just, some were at his head, mm -hmm. his shoulders, his knees, his arms, like just, just all over him, him just wiping him off as he was saying these things. And I remember I was sitting at one leg and across from me was Brayden. He was sitting at the other leg. And Cameron had said some word that, you know, whatever, it, I can't remember exactly what it was. And Brayden is wiping, I mean, just like rubbing and rubbing his leg. And he looks up at me and he literally has, Brayden has tears in his eyes. And he says, how could he possibly think this about himself? Like he was so, these kids were just so, your kids, our kids, <laughs> who kids, were so ministering and knew exactly what they were doing in the spirit of the Lord for Cameron and in the heart of the Father for him. And it was just the most beautiful ministry, I, I think probably ever. Yeah. <laughs> it was just amazing. So how's Cameron today? Well, I, I, I called him like a week or two later and immediately like his voice, just his voice, it mm -hmm. sounded different. It sounded like there was life in his voice and like he is so on fire. Mm -hmm. Like he's posting every day about a scripture verse. And I just, know, I see it actually. It's amazing. On you know? Facebook. And he's like, I can't wait to come back again. He's like, you need to come see me. Like mm. he just wants, wants more. Yeah. He's on fire. It's amazing. So I just, number one, just I just want you to feel like you're you're a part of this same like that is the culture of this whole yeah. house and you as parents and as family as we are all together are a big part of our kids being able to minister like that yeah. in that capacity because they're experiencing that culture it's with really all of us. It's really an impact on yeah. people's lives. Like it's made such an impact on my life. Mm -hmm. And I know it's making an impact on his and every every single person mm -hmm. that's gone back there. It's amazing. And I also would just take the opportunity to say, like, if you ever went the ministry of children or prayed for from just a childlike heart and love, come talk to me, <laughs> talk to Ethan, Kendall, whomever, Steph, you can talk to her, and just tell us you want to come back because those kids love to love on people and they love to see you and all of us in daddy's heart so it's also an invitation for you or anyone that you bring with you um, if you want to be a part of the ministry of children it would be awesome to have you <laughs>